61A, lecture number 28. Announcements. Lab 10 is due on Thursday. Homework 7 is due on Friday. And we will release the scheme project this week. It's due in two weeks. But there are a couple of checkpoints to make sure that you get started before two weeks from now. So next Tuesday, you're meant to complete part one and a little bit of part two, questions one through six. By Friday, you have to complete both part one and part two completely, leaving only part three for the next week. And you can get an early submission bonus point for completing all three parts of the project. By Monday the 20th, the project is due on Tuesday the 21st. In normal semesters, this is by far the largest project in the course. This semester, we've pared it down a little bit because it's harder to follow along with the course remotely than it is on campus, and I want to adjust things accordingly and just focus on the most important parts. So several questions that are normally required have been moved to optional questions. You're welcome to work through them if you want to learn about them, but you don't have to. Also, I've removed the extra credit from this project. There's no extra credit on this project because I want it to be a manageable size. But I'm not taking these extra credit points away from the course entirely. Instead, I'll give you a few extra credit points for taking a practice final exam later on in the course. Those extra credit points will be considerably easier to get than doing extra credit problems on the project. And they'll help ensure that most students practice the final format before the final exam itself, which hopefully will alleviate some technical difficulties. I don't have any more information to announce about the format of the final exam at this time, but we're certainly working on that. So in the meantime, focus on lab and homework and the scheme project. That's plenty to do, but it puts together some of the great ideas in this course. The relationship between scheme and Python by building an interpreter. That interpreter uses object-oriented programming in order to create an interpreter for a language, scheme, which tends to be functional in its nature, and highlights the importance of recursion and trees. Why? Well, scheme expressions, like expressions in most programming languages, are tree-structured, and the way an interpreter works is to recurse over the structure of the expression that's being interpreted. Exactly how that works is the topic of today's lecture. Today's lecture just describes what's going on in the project. And some people do this project and they reflect back and they don't really understand what they were doing. They just try to pass the test cases and solve the problems. But if you actually follow what's going on in this lecture, it gives you an overview of everything that you'll complete in the project. And that can make the project much more interesting because you know why you're trying to do each component and how they fit together. So I hope this is a helpful roadmap. I know that it's asking a lot of students to learn how to write an interpreter in an introductory computer science course, but one of the best ways to learn how to use something well is to learn how to take it apart and put it together. Okay, here we go.